Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Ross from Swing Boss, and welcome to episode two of the podcast here. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to answer some questions that I have here on my MacBook next to me um, from one of the posts that I put up. Uh, talk a little bit about some products, talk a little bit about um, some of the things coming in the future here. So again, a lot of this is shooting from the hip as we go on until I um, find some time to really develop what I want to say in some of these things. Um, so it's pretty much an impromptu episode today. Um, as you guys might have seen, I got the, uh, the Brandon Phillips Dat Dude A2K in today. Um, traded my DC for it, um, and this thing is beautiful. This thing is so nice. Um, it was kind of broken in as a flare, as you can kind of see here. It was kind of flared a little bit. Um, not quite. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of a flare, so thank God it wasn't broken all the way in as a flare. Still a great glove. It's 11 and a half. Um, it wasn't factory oiled or anything like that. It's uh, pretty much pro stiff, ready to go. I'm very, very excited to game this this year. Um, I'm excited to snap some people off at short with this thing. So, uh, to the guys in the league, I'm coming for you. Uh, let's get into some more business here. So, you guys know that I posted the Realtree video. You guys know that I posted the Z4 video. Um, something coming up here shortly in some of the videos is going to be the Zep Labs, as you can see. Um, I don't know if you guys caught this on some of the sneak peek videos that I did um, a while back. I think I had it on the on the Freak Black ASA, maybe a couple other bats, but um, this is definitely common. We're going to use this in outdoor though, so you guys can kind of see the bat speed versus uh, the distance off the bat and and stuff like that, um, hand speed, all that other stuff. It's kind of a little difficult to work with. I don't know if anybody else kind of explained this in the softball world, but these are built for baseball. They're not built for softball. Um, and the reason why is you have to calibrate your swing and what I'm saying is is anybody that's used one of these knows exactly what I'm talking about is that it tells you to kind of load the hands and then pause for three seconds maybe and then it calibrates where that is so it calibrates where your hands are loading I guess to get a sense of where it's going to be when it comes through the zone um, another thing you have to do is you actually have to put the bat in the system so you have to put 34 inches of DeMarini bat. Uh, you don't put the model, but you just put the brand. I don't know why they make you put the brand, but is it uh, metal? Is it wood? Is it other? Um, you know, the weight on it, all those different things you got to put in. The other thing you have to worry about as well is, let's say if I'm a right-handed hitter and you're a left-handed hitter and I leave it on the same bat, uh, you actually have to change the profile to left-handed. Otherwise, everything gets screwed up. Um, the numbers get... 100% screwed up because I took a couple left. I just switched over to the other side of the plate um, when we went and took BP back in probably November or something like that with this on. And uh, I took some left handed swings and it was saying that I had a swing speed of 100 miles an hour, which is obviously not correct considering I'm not a left handed hitter. Um, you know, maybe it was probably somewhere in the 70s and 80s. It was not 100 miles an hour. Um, so, again, any of you guys interested in this, um, it is a great tool. It is a great tool for uh, baseball. It's a pretty good tool for softball. Still trying to work out um, all of the kind of sort of ins and outs and kinks of it, I guess you could say, or things I need to be aware of when we go out and take BP with it. Um, another thing about it is, and I will try to get a graphic up on the screen in a later episode, is how you can kind of see from a bird's eye view. You can see from a side view. You can see all these different views of your swing, hand plane. You know, um, I'm sure you guys have seen this stuff before. Um, and commercials and whatnot of Hunter Pence and Mike Trout and David Ortiz and stuff like that, the guys that are sponsored by Zep. Uh, but it shows their hand path, it shows where everything is, when you're making contact. Um, it actually tells you when you're making contact and you can see on that 3D image where you're making contact. So if you're somebody who's dead pull and you swing around the corner, it's going to show that bad angle that you're around the corner when you're hitting. Or if you like, like me, you like to get your hands out and that knob out in front first and kind of hit and put a nice cut on the ball. Um, it's going to show that you're hitting right here and then putting a cut on the ball. Again, all this stuff will be covered um, in either a podcast or a video once I can get outside. Um, unfortunately, there's a foot of snow here in Pennsylvania outside in March. So um, we just have to kind of follow out and, and wait for all that other stuff to happen. Um, so let me answer some questions here. I have a couple posted. 
Um, Michael asks, what fielding position do you think is most important to a team? Um, all fielding positions are important to a team. Um, you know, your, your pitcher, if you're running a five-man, needs to know where to be. Uh, the relationship between your fifth man and your pitcher and your shortstop all need to kind of have that, that happy triangle, I call it, so everybody knows where they're at. Um, I'm going to be biased towards this question. I play short, so obviously I'm going to say your shortstop and your fifth man are going to be your most important positions. When I play the fifth man, I kind of play like the monster man, I like to call it, because um, I don't just stay put depending on the team that we're playing against. So if this is a team that I've played, in, um, played against for years in the league, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tailor my defense to your lineup, basically. And what I mean by that is if I have a guy that he's going to hit the ball backside every single time, um, you know, pre-pitch. So when my pitcher's kind of dropping his hand back, getting ready to go, what I'll do is I'll stay in my normal position and I'll break back towards second base and back towards shallow right field to try to take away that Texas league or whatever it may be. Um, I like to play five steps in the hole in the grass. I have um, a very, very, very strong arm, so I'm not afraid to cut it loose and play a couple steps back. Um, it, to me, it's an advantage. For anybody with a strong arm, you know it's an advantage that you can play a little deeper because you have that extra couple steps to get to a ball and still be able to make a throw or cut off something in the hole that could possibly be a double if, you're, if your outfielders are playing too deep. Um, so my, my answer to that, biased, would be uh, your shortstop, your fifth man, um, but your pitcher definitely needs to be a defensive stud as well. Um, you know, me having a baseball background, I always thought your catcher was one of your most important people because he was kind of the commander of the field. He knew where everything was going on at all times. Um, but in softball, it's, to me, it's definitely your shortstop of your five. Yeah. Uh, next question here. So, where did the interest in video graphic editing come from in your life? That is from Curtis. Curtis, this is a great question. Um, I get this, sometimes I get this question. Um, and my answer to that question is um, in high school is when I first kind of dabbled with uh, Windows Movie Maker, I think it was, back in, I don't know, 99, 2000, 2001, something like that. Um, you know, just like every, I don't want to say every, but most kids, most guys my age, you know, when you're 13, you got into skateboarding and, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And, you know, our buddy got a camera and we started filming doing skate tricks and stuff like that and then we started putting montage videos together and I guess that's where the the interest kind of sparked and um, I always was you know before Vine was here I was making those kind of videos in high school I was making funny videos um, I was making all kinds of fun stuff and I just like to kind of have full creative control over everything I was doing and just have fun with it and like I mentioned in my previous podcast uh, Mark Crossfield who is the uh, golf sensation on YouTube who got me involved in Swing Boss to try to review products and, and whatnot, kind of got me back into the back into the video editing, um, I guess you could say, mode. I don't know. Um, my wife bought me a GoPro about a year before I got into the whole softball reviewing stuff. And if you could see, see my office right now, you would see I you have know, my, my Hero 3 Black, I have my Hero 2, I have the camera I'm filming on my iPhone. Uh, my green screen, I got everything. So um, I wouldn't say it's an addiction, but there's definitely a method to, to the madness of the swing boss. Um, very, very good question. So uh, let's see. Curtis also asks, what is the swing boss's baseball background? Um, so ever since I was like probably three or four when I could swing a wiffle ball bat, uh, is when it all started, I guess. Um, the, the best story my mom ever told me is I think I was like four or five. My uncle said, um, every one of these balls you hit, I'm going to give you a dollar. And I think my uncle walked away um, about $35 less in his pocket that day. And from there, you know, my dad was just like, he's taking the baseball, let's, let's get him into it. He never pushed it on me. Um, his biggest uh, thing was, you know, play until it's not fun anymore. It's got to be fun. If you're going to play and it's not fun, then it becomes a job or it becomes something that you're just not a fan of anymore. So um, it's still fun. <laughs> it will probably always be fun. Um, I actually, I don't know if any of you guys know, I tore my labrum um, in my left shoulder diving into home plate last year to play at the plate in my adult wood bat baseball league that I used to play in. 
Um, unfortunately, with the baby here and the risk of injury again, I'm not going to play. This I'm retiring, I guess you could say, after I guess 10 years in that league um, of playing. But you know, I was I was a pretty exceptional player. I was a, I was a larger kid growing up. Um, I was bigger than everybody else when I was you know 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, and everybody kind of hit their, their growth spurt around 16, 17 when I had already kind of hit mine. And I was in the gym when I was 13, 14. Um, so I, I was a much bigger guy. So I was, I was an exceptional athlete growing up, especially with baseball. I always had a strong arm. I was always a power hitter. I was always a, um, a bigger power hitter. Um, I, you know, made the all-stars ever since I was eight, all the way up to, you know, 14 or whatever all-stars ends. Um, you know, ninth grade ball, JV ball, I was two-year starter varsity for junior year and senior year. Uh, I, I mean, I could go on and on. Um, I, I, played in, I played in college for a couple of years at Penn State Altoona. Um, and then uh, school is much more important than sports kids. That's what you go to college for. Um, I'm not saying don't play sports in college, but uh, if you're on the fence about playing a sport in college, it is a full-time job. So be careful with that um, because I know those two years I played in college, my grades sacrificed tremendously. Um, and my last two years of college, uh, they did not because I could focus more on school. Um, but baseball will always be my first love. That's why a lot of you guys rag on me for my baseball swing and softball. Um, that's probably not ever going to go away. Um, it works. It never hasn't worked. Uh, the only swing that would probably be softball swing is my left-handed swing because I open my hip up so much and I just try to let everything kind of hang out and and throw my hands at it. Um, it's basically do or die when I swing left-handed. It's either going to be a ground ball between uh, first and second, or it's going to be a moonshot to right field, or it's going to be a line driver with the second baseman's head. You will never see me hit the middle. You will never see me hit backside left-handed. It's always dead pull. Um, so back onto another question here. Let's see. Uh, Ron Suave wants to hear uh, about combats. So I got into combats last year when I swung the Derby Boy ASA and the Derby Boy U-Trip. Um, Love those bats. Uh, never had a problem with them. We actually had one where the float inside cracked or the disc or whatever it is and cracked. And it just turned into a fire-breathing monster um, until it exploded actually like a week ago. Um, so I am a fan of combats. I like swinging the gilt. Uh, the guilt was a lot of fun to swing. The graphics were, were pretty nice on that. Um, you know, paint's paint, but I still like the graphics on that. The Duke I'm very excited about. That's an ASA bat. Um, some pretty sweet graphics on that. Nice two-piece looking bat. Um, I haven't seen one pop up in my local area around here, but definitely something I'm looking to, to, looking forward to swinging. Um, you know, don't don't stray away from combat. Um, I know Di Marini last year had an awesome year. Louisville Slugger with the Z-Line has been having awesome years. Um, don't let that stuff overshadow combat. Um, I suggest you guys get out and swing it if you can, and, uh, and let me know what you think about that, by the way. Uh, so this is probably the toughest question is going to be, uh, what is your unbiased opinion on the best ASA bat, considering distance, sweet spot, durability, and break in time? Um, considering, uh, Billy, since that is such a broad question, you're going to get a very broad answer, um, and the answer isn't going to be one that you like. The answer is that I have no idea, uh, because you're asking me every ASA bat, I don't know, it could be an RD28, could be a bat from 10 years ago, I don't know. Um, if you're asking me a new 2015 line, still a question I might not know, considering I haven't swung the DeMarini line yet, and considering I haven't swung all of the Louisville line yet, or all of, um, what's the other one? Uh, no, just the DeMarini line. That's, I haven't really touched any of the ASAs for DeMarini. Um, I have right here, actually, in front of me, because I'm going to talk about something, is my aftermath from last year. Um, so, uh, you guys know I am somewhat of a DeMarini fan. So I'm not going to sit here and be biased towards them, but this bat, um, I couldn't put it down last year. Uh, it was definitely a great bat. Um, I, I don't know, man. Some people would say J3. I personally am not a fan of the J3. I don't think I've ever gotten an actual base hit with the J3. Um, you know, I've hit the ball hard, but it's always right at people. Um, but it's... I'm the kind of person where I find a bat I like, I stick with it. I'm not just going to pick up this bat and that bat and this bat and that bat just because some guy brought him to the field. Um, I would much rather take a couple of rounds of BP with bat and get used to it first before I start using stuff in a game. So um, for this year, 
Dude, I have no clue. You guys know me, Z4. That's my, and again, this would be biased opinion. I love that Z4. Um, we had a mix of 44s and 52s, and I was, I hit five 52s in a row, and I thought three of them were 44s. That's how hard it was hitting the ball. Um, and they wouldn't tell me what they were until after the round was done, and they were like, yeah, the first five were, were 52s, not 44s, and kind of blew my mind there. So, um, Something I want to talk about, I think I'm running out of time here. Something I want to talk about with you guys real quick is, uh, is grips on bat weights. Um, so as you can see here, I kind of have a little bit of a hybrid. You guys, if you've seen some of my posts before, I go a little crazy with grips sometimes. But uh, this one was originally just taped with some tape. Um, I put a little extra, I put a little extra right here to kind of give me a little bit of a taper. And then I taped all the way to the handle and the lies. I don't know how you guys are, but I like it to just go to my hands. I don't like it to come up to here. I don't know what you guys are smoking that puts your, your grips all the way up to here. That is just weird to me. Um, I don't understand it. So mine's right here. Uh, I always hang a, hang a pinky off. That's kind of my thing. I always hang a pinky off. It feels weird to kind of go all the way down to the knob now. Um, and then what I did to help that taper was I pulled strips of tape over each side all the way down and around, which kind of creates, it helps create that taper. Then from there what I did was um, I took a piece of tape and I kind of balled it up a long piece of tape and I ran that down just for the bottom hand. And then after I ran that down and put some tape over it, I pulled a lizard over it. And I don't know if you can kind of see those, those little bumps in there. I love that. My hands can, my bottom hand can fit perfectly right inside there. Um, I, I just love it. That's just me. Um, a lot of you local guys, that play on my team know that I mess with my grip. I'll rip my grip off mid-game if I don't like it and throw a piece of tape on there, spray tack and go. Um, it's all about how I feel right then, right there, um, how the grip is. I like a very, 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 very grippy handle. Um, that's why if it's taped, it's going to have to be batting gloves and um, spray tack probably. Um, a lot of you guys know I don't actually swing with batting gloves. Uh, I've been swinging those new Mike and batting gloves because they were sent to me, um, and they're really, really nice. I actually am a little upset. I tore the ring finger on the left hand on them when I was ripping them off real quick during that Z4 video um, because my hands started getting real sweaty and it, it just wasn't working out. Um, kind of go over a couple of things here. So we talked about the A2K. We talked about uh, the ZEP that I'll be doing some videos uh, for you guys. I answered some of your questions. Again, this is very, very, very impromptu um, until I can kind of get a system. What I need from you guys is I need your questions. Um, the more you guys ask questions, the more this gets um, less of me going off the top of my head and the more it gives me some structure that I can go off of. Um, I've had a couple people reach out to me and say, hey, when are you going to get this? When are you going to get that? When is it going to be live? I mean, right now, right now, I have my computer right here. I can feel questions live if that's how we're going to do it. Um, it will, it, everything will always be recorded and then posted every Sunday at 6 o'clock like I'm doing. Some days, it, Sometimes it might skip some Sundays, but it will always be Sunday and will always be at 6 o'clock. The reason why I do this for you guys is because you guys out in California, um, you're, you, you know, you'll be catching this around, I guess, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which um, hopefully you're done your league games by then. If not, when you get home, 4, 5, 6 o'clock at night, you'll still be able to catch the podcast, um, video cast, whatever we want to call it. It's just easier to do on Sundays because everybody's mostly everybody's home. Most people don't have to work, um, especially in the afternoon. So that's why I try to do it at six o'clock, maybe seven or eight o'clock. I'll release it. I don't know if it gets enough interest. Um, the only way it's going to get enough interest is through you guys. I plan on um, doing some giveaways. I plan on doing some prizes. Um, you know, all that fun stuff. But I can't physically do any of that stuff without the reach and without the viewership that you guys give me. So again. Post your questions, please. Um, you know, let's get this thing rolling. Um, I'm gonna have some guests on. Um, I don't know when my first guest is gonna be available um, because we're trying to figure out how I'm gonna record everything. I don't know if I need to physically be with them to record it. I don't know if I need to just do it via Skype or whatever it may be. Um, but I know you guys, um, when I release who the guests are, you're gonna have a ton of questions. Um, I'm extremely excited for you guys to ask them. I'm extremely excited to answer them. I'm extremely excited to hear the answers from some of the guests to some of these questions I know you guys will have. Um, again, hit me up on all the platforms behind me. Um, just You can ask your questions on any of them. Um, you know, Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if you think I'm crazy about one of my reviews. Just, just 
let me know. Um, I have the Easton Mako Torque coming out soon um, video. It's just the ASA model, I believe. Uh, the Realtree released, the Z4 released. Um, and we're getting ready to play, guys. It's March. Um, you know, here in Pennsylvania, mid April is when we start season. So uh, a lot of you guys in the warm weather um, areas have probably been playing all year. But for us, this is an extremely exciting time of the year. Uh, baseball's back, softball's back. Um, a lot, a lot of good stuff going on. So, again, send me your questions. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and until next time, I'll see you guys.